live from YMSL Studios. Welcome to the Doug Less Report. I'm your host, Bobby Moravia, with my uh, partner over here to the left, NRJ, and Norman. What else can, needs to be said? There's a week left in the regular season, and the standings are in complete chaos. And uh, it gets really crazier notice. and crazier every week. We keep saying, you know, after next week we'll know what's what's mm -hmm. happening, and then that week comes, and it just everybody is so jumbled together. And finally, after this Sunday, we're going to have to have a result of who's in the playoffs, who's not in the playoffs. Well, no. The only thing we do know for sure is Exit 105 is in the postseason. And but not necessarily with a bye. No, not even with a bye. Nobody has a bye. We do know two things. Nobody has a bye and nobody's eliminated. So that we've, uh, we've already uh, narrowed that down. Uh, there's Maurice Haber seems to think he clinched and he's trying to prove it. Uh, we've had our gurus working on uh, this. They can't prove that he's in or he's out. So right. it's still not 100% with him. But the X is next to his name on the, yeah. on the website. So and that might be X'd out. <laughs> it might be X'd out. I noticed earlier in the week the Pirates had an X. Uh, yeah. And then it was taken away. And yeah. they, if, if everything happens wrong for them, they have a one-game yeah. playoff, possibly. We're going to go through some of the scenarios. I mean, there's over 300 different possibilities uh, with tiebreakers. It's wild. Some uh, three-team tiebreakers, four-team, and even a five-team uh, tiebreaker. So, uh, amazingly enough, uh, I don't think it's in the 38-year history of the league has it been where every team's abs ab you know, mathematically alive with, uh, with a week left. Um, I mean, even the Braves, as bad as they were, as low, you know, they have a, a pretty decent shot if things would go their way to get in. Well, they obviously have to win their two yeah, games, yeah, obviously. Right. But if they do win their two games, they don't need that much no, help. You no. know, it's not like crazy, crazy what needs right, to happen. Right. Um, so the Braves are alive, but can they win two? Have they won two all year? I don't think so. So uh, I don't think they've swept anybody. It could be maybe one team, but, uh, but you know, now yeah. now's the time to do it. And um, yeah, so that's uh, one thing uh, we do know. The exit 105, the regular season is over, so they sit back and watch and see if they get a buy. But what's uh, funny is everyone said how exit 105 had the has the buy this week, and then they're like, oh, they're going to be off yeah, for yeah, a month. Another, another not week. necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> they could not get the buy. Actually, it's not far fetched. They don't get the buy because you know they don't have the tiebreakers versus a, a couple of teams that are. Uh, they don't have them against, against the, pirates. the pirates and all in I and believe. all in. I believe right. also. Um, so they okay. have it against the Expos. Oh, they have the, They don't have the run differential against Olin, and the Pirates swept them. So you know they'll uh, they'll be a, actually. There's a way that you can even not only not get a bye, but can even be the fourth seed. Yes. So so that's another interesting scenario. Well, you look at a team like the Pirates and the Expos. Both teams have a chance to get a bye yeah. and have a chance to be playing on Friday in a play-in game yeah. to see who gets the, the last spot in the playoffs. But they even have a shot the Pirates of getting a bye and right. getting eliminated. That, that's so, what I'm saying. Well, Both I don't even know with, that, with a one-game playoff. I don't know. That's oh, really? Sure. That's for that, sure. There might be a way that in a crazy four-way tie that they might not even make the playoffs. Let's talk Sunday. briefly about what happened and then we'll talk, right, about, we'll talk about anything about, that could happen. We'll talk about uh, briefly about the recaps of this past week's game. We'll do this uh, playoff scenarios and then we'll preview um, Sunday's action. So we'll start off with your game at uh, exit 105. Uh, uh, at, uh, no, with, with, the, with the White with, uh, Sox. White Sox at uh, Memorial One. The featured and, game. Yeah. It was very, very different to be at Memorial One with nothing doing at Memorial Two. You know, it, it was very quiet in Memorial too. The field looked humongous. Yeah. It looked very different without the other field. Um, both scores in the doubleheader were 3-2, and we split the doubleheader. It was really, really, really great pitching by Ralph Hannon and by Mikey Shalom. Yeah. Um, they pitched great. Neither offense hit anything. In fact, the game that we won, we scored on a couple of infield hits and a couple of sack flies, maybe... maybe uh, Actually, Lee uh, Zakaria had a big double early in the game, but, you know, we scored with small ball. The game that they won, they scored also without the ball leaving the infield and then a couple of sack flies. Very well-played games, uh, not too many errors, uh, re really well-played games, not much hitting, great pitching. And what Saban told me on the way out was that if either team swept, that pitcher would have been player of the week for sure because they really both pitched their hearts out. Yeah. Um, now... 
the White Sox, many are calling them the Black Sox now because of a, uh, a, a slotting issue that they had. Yeah. Um, and some even going so far as to calling them the Burnt Sox because they don't know the rules after this long. But they need to look it out. They need to look out for this in the playoffs. Oh, for sure. If they get in, uh, you know, you have some uh, guys there that scrutinize the uh, the books and yeah. everything. Um, I mean, I blame myself. I'm the captain. I'm supposed to check the other team and make sure that they're slotting legally. But they had two guys in the same slot, both, both playing, playing defense. Yeah. Meanwhile, I got a pitcher in Mikey that's hurt. He can't really run. The whole year, I'm figuring out where I'm slotting him, how to do it in order to get him in that bat late in a game if I can. It's always a, a discussion throughout the right, week. Right. Painstaking discussion to get it right, and then you see this team. Yeah. Who knows what they're doing all year? Yeah, but they don't. Yeah, but they didn't do it maliciously. In the, not at know, all. Just, it wasn't yeah. malicious at all. But yeah. you gotta so, play by the rules. Right, right, right. Not malicious at all. Obviously, uh, we did protest the game, right. so maybe we already clinched. Yeah, you know, maybe. We're, we're waiting league rule uh, on maybe that. Maybe you gotta buy also in the exactly. in the World Series. No, no one thought they did it maliciously, yeah. but you gotta get it right. Either way, it was a very minor part of the game. Yeah, I was very impressed with their third baseman. Uh, Harry Braha. Harry Braha. He made every single play that came to him. And Leo Freeman at short center made a couple of web gems. Yeah, yeah. Great, great plays. Um, on my side, we had Alley playing shortstop, and he made some plays. So uh, is that going to be uh, the rest of the way? That, that, that yeah. Carlos looks very good in center field. Carlos is a tremendous center fielder. Um, he's going to be playing center. Alley's going to be playing short. And, and both are excellent at where they are. Right. Um, so the truth is, originally... Um, I thought we needed Alley in center because my brother Joseph was playing right, and I thought I needed a lot more speed in center to handle right. all the real estate. But Joseph has stepped up this year. Yeah, but Carlos covers a lot of ground. Though. Carlos he covers makes, a ton of ground. He always makes great catches. So that's that's the move we made, but we're still not hitting. We need to take yeah. it with our lineup a little bit. Yeah, you had lineup, and uh, you took the collar this week, I think, 0 for 6. Uh, I took the collar. <laughs> um, he pitched, I don't know, he pitched really good. I had a very tough time hitting him. I got no, well, You know something, Ralph, I mean, a lot of people were skeptical when he was taken in the second round, but he throws very hard. Yeah. And he's got a great bat. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't know what else you could look and for. And it's not the round. same pitch every time. It's not hard, yeah. hard, hard. He goes in, he goes out. I don't know. He, he, I was really, really impressed. I have not faced him a lot yeah. in my life, to tell you the truth. And, uh, you know, he was really strong. And you shut down a pretty good uh, potent offense also uh, with the White Sox. Every team that we play, usually, I mean, with the exception of Exit 105, every team that we play usually says, wow, you guys are a lot better than we thought. You, you, your pitching is a lot better right. than we thought. You know, Mikey's opening eyes around the league. Our offense has to start hitting. Right, right. So so you walked away with a split. Both teams with a 3-2 loss. Uh, so um, for you, you solidified your slot uh, at 8-6. And uh, the White Sox kept their uh, their hopes alive. Uh, you know, if they lost that second game, it could have been uh, you know, pretty devastating. For Every them. team you talk to can point to three, four games that they feel they should have won. Right. Every team thinks they should be better than they are. Every one. Right. Like the White Sox were leaving in the parking lot saying, oh, we should have swept. You know, we were saying we should have swept. Right, right. And you go down the list. That, that's how everyone's so bunched together. Like, everything is so close this year. It's crazy. Yeah. No, it's, it's unbelievable. And just when you thought... And what happens is, you looked at this week, everybody's splitting, so it just makes it, you know, even tighter. Right. So, um... Uh, that was the Memorial 1, and there was no Memorial 2, as uh, we mentioned, the field was not... There was no playable. Memorial 3. Memorial you know, 3. I would like to point out also uh, a shout-out to our unbelievable grounds crew that uh, managed uh, almost every league in the area was canceled with right. our uh, grounds crew. And also a special shout-out to Max Sutton, who got there early in the morning also with his all his... He's got more equipment. He had like machinery, he's actually. He's got machinery. Yeah. He's invested a lot of money in uh, all types of uh, the newest gadgets. By the way, the thieves in the parking lot were very upset yes. there was only one game in Memorial this week. Usually yeah. they have like hundreds of cars. They only have like a dozen cars. But, but, steal but them. <laughs> they hit up some nice Are you serious? Yes. yes. This is crazy. Lock <laughs> your car. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's ironic you mentioned it, but Harry Braha had to leave early. Right. And he says you know something I got my, the emails and everything and I left the car unlocked and they stole his wallet okay you really if you're gonna leave your wallet in the car anyway lock it but right. when you get 10 emails this year lock your car yeah well some people uh, actually uh, locked the car mm-hmm uh, but they left the top down so you know they, <laughs> right you know <laughs> what can you do but uh, so uh, yeah remember hopefully we won't have too many more games of Memorial this year we're gonna 
go to our fireman's playoffs uh, spot. But mm -hmm. um, so that was at the Memorial One. Now the next matchup was at uh, this was a fireworks matchup at Meadowbrook mm -hmm. between the Red Hot Pirates and the Exit One Hundred Five. Who cooled off a little bit uh, right. the last couple of weeks. Uh, they came in actually already have clinched a, a spot. So uh, you know I don't know how really into the game they were. Um, we, we, yeah, I, both, I believe we both did. We picked the Pirates. As, uh, you picked the Pirates to sweep. Well, I, you know what? We really picked oh, the split, split, but we I said did. we could see. Oh, a, see right. We could see a sweep. We should have had right. a little more guts and just said, you know, they're going to sweep. Yeah, so the sense they're coming. Um, anyway, they're playing without Jack Hatted. Uh, was away, so that was uh, they were missing a couple of pieces. Um, I mean, the Pirates just continued. The, the they are on a roll, and they won the game differently this week in that it was a low-scoring game. It was not. 14 to 3. Yeah. They won 4 1. They won an extra inning game. It was 3 all going into extra innings. Uh, you know, so they won a couple of low scoring games. They took the sweep. They remain red hot. This team was 1 and 5. Right. They are 8 and 6 right now. Right. That means they, they, they won 7 of 8 games. Uh, Alvin Gamal continued his hard hitting. Another home run this week. Um, 3 for 8. Jordy Rommel, 6 for 7. The combo, like we said last week, of Chira, Jordy, and Albert Gamal as the top three right. in the game. Now you get to the field, you're ready to play, you gotta face those three guys. Then Eddie Hakim. Eddie Hakim, another monster game. It, it's, also. it's a monstrous he's lineup. No, he's uh, so, no, he's on hustle. Uh, so, those, th <laughs> those three, four guys on top of the lineup, I mean, it, it is very, very hard to face, but it looks like the Edge the 105 is able to tame them yeah. somewhat. Yeah, Maxi Deep is a great game. I caught a few innings of this game. Uh, some uh, you know a very controversial ending to the game as I'm sure you heard uh, you know bases loaded uh, in the bottom of the, in the ninth inning I believe it was it says eight innings yeah it was actually nine but I think it was the it was the top of the ninth actually when this happens three three bases loaded Amy Sham is up ripped a, a shot down third base off of uh, Solly Towel's glove he nicked it and it went out of, out of bound mm -hmm. uh, out of play and Ump called it a fair ball and. Uh, they were in a huff, and Mo Shama, you know, abused the umpire, and Ali Patesh got involved. So it was, uh, it was a very ugly scene. They both got thrown out of the game. But the ball was fair when it hit off his glove, or well, the, you know, it depends who you ask. You know, right. I mean, they were saying, you know, of course, you speak to the exit 105. They say his only towel was standing out of bed. You know, I mean, it's like one guy says 100 percent clear. Uh, Myers seat seat safety says it was 100 percent fair. You know, so you gotta. You don't know who to believe and uh, what the right call. The guy made a call. That's the bottom line. It was close. It was not worth all the uh, hoopla that it. Uh, right. But it was a very, um, very big loss in more ways than one for Exit 105 because Mo Shama was suspended for Game One of the playoffs. Are you serious? Yes. So. Oh my God! Yeah. Wow. So I, I did not know that. That is yeah. breaking news. Yeah. Um, that should be on top on the top crawl of the exactly. webpage, by the way. That is breaking news. Marsham has suspended game one of the playoffs. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. And you're allowed to do that because he know that's the only team that's in the playoffs. So yeah. you could suspend someone for the playoffs. That's yeah. good. I mean, we were thinking of suspending him for the bye week, but I don't know if that would have hurt right. their team, you know. <laughs> right, but anybody oh well everyone else still has more <laughs> games this week. You're right. Right, so um so that was a big big loss for them and um and the Pirates were uh, ecstatic to, to come out with another sweep, so they're eight and uh, eight and six, sitting very pretty. Uh, once again, our phone lines are open seven three two five YMSL five five. That's uh, seven three two five YMSL five five. We uh, look forward to uh, hearing from uh, all our fans. Um, so now we go to. Uh, this week we played at Dow Avenue also. Yeah, blast from the past, uh, Dow Avenue. One of the uh, top uh, fields, uh, you know, it's a good draw. We had uh, the Bears, uh, struggling mightily Bears versus uh, All In, another red hot team. And uh, Leo Casson pitching great against a trio of um, <laughs> Moses. Mount <Matt> Rushmore <laughs> of, <laughs> of pitching. And we added a new one on this. Uh, it was uh, Nemi Mo uh, Moses and now Eddie Michon. Right, in the mix. right. Don't forget Charles Sackle was Charles a pitcher Sackle. on that team. Yeah. They had a full stack. Yeah, so a uh, third of the team pitches. But um, so uh, All In came in and assaulted them. Six runs in the top of the first. and uh, Right off the bat. Yeah. And I, I, I don't even... Do you know if Nemi started or... Uh, well, I know the plan out? was that they were going to pitch... 
Nemi and Moses. They had yeah. a triple header, so obviously they were going to use both. Neither of them could really go two, let alone three. Right. So they were going to pitch both. And then my first update I got is what was uh, was that either one or both of them got rocked, and Eddie Michon is now pitching. And I hear he pitched, you know, yeah. okay. Of course, he pitched back in the past. A couple years ago. Well, one thing about Eddie Michon, he's going to no speed on it whatsoever. Just nothing, but he will not walk a person. So, I mean, if you have a good defense, it's not a bad, you know, sort of the Meyer Safety theory. All the Meyer Safety has been coming with some heat lately. Uh, but, you know, so uh, that was the play worked for a few, and he's got him out of that first game. Uh, you know, so now Moses started game two. And all in, uh, you know, continued uh, just the barrage. The barrage of, uh, but their lineup is really, really strong. Their lineup strong. They got Jack Abadi, Henry, um, Maurice having an unbelievable Maurice, year. Maurice, yeah. Um, you know, Chucky's even good. Who else? You have uh, Malak. Malak. I knew I was missing somebody. I, I, I knew I was missing a major. Yeah, Zeke Dweck having a big year on that team. Yeah, I mean, and Amy Dweck's having an MVP here. Got to have Amy Dweck. So and a, these guys are very, very confident because yeah. they're playing us this upcoming week, and I've gotten my share of trash talk. I've received a lot of trash talk from this team saying they can't wait to play us yeah. and they're going to sweep us and this and that. So, but the big story on this team, I think, is uh, the resurgence of uh, Leo Casson. Giving the ultimatum. Yeah, give the ultimatum. And he responded in ago. a major, major way. So, uh, you know, maybe Hammer and Hank had a good point to, to take that guy and. Uh, the third round and the you know what the hammer you know he, he dropped the hammer yeah. he demanded the pick it looked like it wasn't working now it looks like it's working perfectly at just the right time right right so uh you know leo has now secured his job going into the playoffs and we right. believe that team has clinched right. we, we think um so uh you know we'll see how far he can speaking take speaking of all in mm -hmm. i believe uh we have the captain of the all-in organization on the line maurice haber Hey, you're on the air. How are you, Norman? How you doing? How, How you doing? doing? I yeah. hope you got your passports in order. All in, uh, punched our ticket to the playoffs. Is that correct? Or we got that scenario under control? We, we, you, we cannot fully 100% <laughs> confirm that you're in, but it looks like it. I see an X on my name, so I think you guys officially confirmed. <laughs> oh, well, like we mentioned earlier in the show, we might exit out also, so we got to uh, yeah. figure it out. And, well, I want to direct the question. I want to direct Of yes. course. Okay, so first of all, I don't know who's trash and talking you from our team. We have the utmost respect for your team, Ali Marshall. Your pitch is pitching great. Uh, it's going to be a tough battle. We really want to buy. We're going to play our best, but nobody should be trash talking is your this, team. Is this Jack team. Jamal or Maurice Haber? Please <laughs> let me know. <laughs> I, I can't rat out my sources, but uh, I'll, I have some emails from uh, from a couple of your players. I gotta tell you now. If let, let's say we sweep you, we still don't guarantee ourselves the buy unless the Pirates lose a game. But if you sweep right. us, you Please. definitely get the buy, I believe. Yeah. I want to ask a question to the commissioner. Yes. I think you're wrong about the Pirates because I think they clinched. They're ahead of three teams, no matter what happens. So I, I guess I'll watch the show and you'll let me know. Yeah, you watch the show and we'll yeah, break we, it down. Uh, uh, we have the statistician in-house. He's going to be our in-studio guest, and he's going to show you a way that the Pirates uh, are eliminated or have to play a play-in game, actually. Yeah. So I, I can't wait. I stay can't wait. tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. A, they, you know, because you're figuring out a three-way tie, but there was a way that, that they have a five-way tie uh, at eight and eight, and uh, they might have, like, uh, you know, the uh, not they don't have the tiebreakers in those situations. We're going to get to it in a moment. Anyway, get get your visas in order because you're coming up to Olympic Stadium, and we're going to give you a dog fight up there. I, I didn't know that uh, you have the home court. I thought you were coming to the Olympic Stadium. <laughs> It's gonna be like the Met Yankee when they do the one game in Yankee Stadium, the one game in Shea. We're gonna we're gonna have one game Olympic Stadium, and then we're gonna to come to wherever you play, the Verizon Center. Gotcha. I want to give a shout out to a lot of guys on my team, just so you know, they played unbelievable this week. The Bears were a good team. Uh, Moses Eastman was the guy who started, just an FYI. Oh, okay. And, uh, uh, gave up to Eddie Michon, but uh, we have a lot of guys on our team that are gelling together. Zeke Dweck, AB Dweck, Henry Shallon, Jimmy. All these guys are playing fantastic. Jack of Batties. Web gems in center field, and uh, I just feel special about our team. No offense to you, Norman, but uh, we have a good bunch of guys, and uh, I hope we're there. 
right. Uh, look, your team is red hot right now, along with the Pirates. So uh, you have a good a shot as anybody. I mean, everyone's right in the middle of the pack. So Nemi didn't pitch at Nemi didn't pitch at all against you. Oh, wow. All right. Okay, well, we hope everything's okay over there. Uh, all right. And uh, thanks for Maurice, the call, Maurice. Right. Keep watching. And, uh, I forward to seeing you. Good all night. right, thank you. you. Very diplomatic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Over there. Maurice, uh, shades of uh, little Jack Jamal with his, uh, you know, praising the opponents. Well, let's get to Jack Jamal and his hustle organization. All right, so hustle, this was uh, Fireman's uh, West, the uh, home away from home for the Expo <laughs> That's <organization>. right. <laughs> Uh, now these were great games, uh, Hustle versus the Braves. Right. Um, we both picked the Braves to sweep. Uh, As did Jigga. Yes, <laughs> Jigga. And uh, the first score I got was 4 nothing Braves at the top of the first. I right. said, we're looking pretty good. And uh, about 10 minutes later it was 4-4. Four, 4-4, four. Four, four. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, obviously uh, Mabora getting some jet lag. He just got off uh, a flight from Israel scouting in Tel Aviv. So he was, uh, he got back a couple days before, uh, had the first action in about a month. Um, so he got hit a little bit hard and, um, you know, it was a big, uh, this was a back and forth game when uh, the Braves took a 7-4 lead. Right, that's the thing. After they blew the first lead, they so got right, another lead. Fifth inning or something? I yeah, think it was. they had a 7-4 lead in the fifth. Yeah. And the next score I got was 8-7 yeah. and Hustle won. And, and we've talked about this all year. I, I mean, Hustle is... Five and eight, they've got three, four games where they were down five nothing. They could be like it's a, it's wild because they, really, they came back against me five yeah. runs. And I, I believe know, they split with the Pirates. So I'm not sure. But the next game, the five runs. They were dead after they came back to do five. The you know, the next game they were down five and came back to win that game. So this is like the third big deficit they came back to win, and uh, so Zach it was a big loss to lose game one, and then but then it was an unbelievable game two. Now, how did they blow those two leads? Was it errors, or did Saka not was not able to close the door? Um, I, I think there was a couple of breakdowns on defense. Uh, you know, defense. Uh, that's a really, big disappointment yeah. for the Braves, who can't score. That they took a four nothing lead, a seven four lead late, and they couldn't slam the door. That's right, a huge, right, huge right. disappointment in Atlanta. And I thought when I saw the Braves lost that they were done, but they're still alive. We're going to get to that. Now go to game two, okay, which is game an all-time two, classic. Game uh, two was a classic. I was trying to get there from uh, Memorial. Uh, by the time I got there, it was over. It was a nine-inning affair. 1-1, one, one, classic uh, pitching uh, match and uh, a pitching duel. And ended on a walk-off single by Jody Lebeau's, uh in the bottom of the ninth. Um, but uh, both teams had numerous opportunities um, to, uh, to put this game away. Uh, Hustle had the bases loaded on three different occasions. Running on third, no outs. They didn't get him home. So um, that was a very, very big loss. They could have, they could have swept them and uh, and really uh, gave themselves uh, a little uh, distance. Classic pitching duel by two of the better pitchers in the yeah. league. Two of the three that are in the bottom three in the standings right now. All first round pitchers have a chance to be eliminated. By right. the way, if the if the playoffs started today. Um, obviously, something's going to change, I think, but who knows. That leads us to the game three at five right. wins between the Bad News Bears, who were coming off a sweep, and Hustle, who was coming off a thrilling victory and a split. Yeah. So now they play the game three. I want to skip to the last inning. I don't know if you have any lead into that. No, this is another, uh, another interesting game um, that uh, Hustle, it was a back and forth game, very low scoring, but get to the, the bottom of the last inning. Bottom line is Hustle now at this point was five and seven was yeah. their record. They have a one run lead in the last inning against the bottom of the order of the Bad News Bears. Right. Bad News Bears at this point are floundering. They lost two games, it's the bottom of the seventh, and they're losing again. Ike Mavor is on the mound. Second round pick, best right. pitcher in the league according second to pick the draft. Overall, that's a second pick overall. Yeah. Thank you. And you know, I know he got player of the week. I know he hit well. I know he pitched, you know, a lot of innings because he had the extra inning and, and the three games. But Mavora coughed this one up, and, and he has to take the blame for this. Lead-off hitter, Louis Massery, he walks him. Yeah. Maybe five pitches. Then, uh, lead-off of that, of that inning. 
Next um, comes up was Eshko. Anyone? Josh. Uh, Joe Eshko. I believe Joe Eshko hits a, hits a ground ball right to Mavora. Should have been a double play. Throws it to A.B. Yeah. Salem. A.B. Sa- out at second. A.B. Salem airmails the ball to first, allowing the runner to get oh, to second oh, base. Oh, that was a huge, huge play. Huge play. Matt, but, we, we, we should add something very important to that play. Uh, Labo, who was the normal first baseman, had to leave early, and they put Hassan at, uh, at first base. So would Labo have had that play? There's a lot. I don't think the throw is catchable for, for either, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, an experienced first baseman, and but the, actually the the thing was bad decision by AB Sale because you're not going to double up Eshko. You you're know, not going to double him right. up anyway. And no, you no, have no, no more. reason to throw. But that. now the guy goes to second right. base. Okay, one out man on second. Okay, Robert Braha up. Yeah. Not exactly. Uh, Although Lugan. having a fine year. A fine year, fine player, clutch player. Last year yeah. in the World Series, he was clutch. He hits a beautiful, clean line drive to right field to tie the game. Yeah. Okay? Now it's a tie game in the last inning. Now he goes to second on the throw home. Right. Man on second again, one out. Eddie Rishley, walk. Eddie Michon, walk. Mo Kassin, sack fly. Right. You Not, can't walk three okay, guys I, in the To me, inning. it looked like he was pitching around Eddie Rishley, and I don't know why. I mean, he's a singles hitter, and you challenge him at that point. And that, because well, what do you got? You got Eddie Michon, MVP candidate, up next, and he can drill it into the gap. Uh, They're both great hitters, but you can't walk both of them. Yeah. You can't. You, you can pick one to walk. You can't walk both to let the guy go from second right, to third right, and score right, in a side right, fly. Right. Mo Cassin on the first or second pitch, scut the ball. He gets his very. He can hit a fly bat. ball in his sleep. He didn't powerful even need a bat. hit. He yeah. needed a fly ball. Right. Piece of cake. He did it. They won the game. It saved the Bears season and it possibly ruined Hustle season. Yeah. Again, uh, yeah, that, that was a bad decision to put Eshko at second base. was uh, was a big, big thing. Because, you know, he, he might have pitched different than the next guy not without an open base. So, you know, who knows? And, and Hustle was shorthanded. They didn't have Leo Pachotto. So they had Jack Jam- They moved uh, Zach Ashkenazi to center. Yeah. They had Big Soli playing right. shortstop, right. Jack Jamal playing third. And they still uh, they played three great games, three one run games, two in extra innings. Uh, by the way, Louis Mastry played an outstanding short uh, short center. He made some. Uh, He's great an athlete. Plays. Great plays uh, over there. So, um, so the you know, the, and that really, like you said, saved the Bears' season. I mean, they would have been devastated to lose three in one day. Oh my God! Been, uh, so, oh, we have a call coming in. Uh, AB believe... from Lawrence Avenue, I believe. Oh, maybe so. AB, you're on the air. Yeah. Lower your, uh, yeah. Lower your radio, caller. Okay, how are you? We're doing good. Yes. This is Abe Salem of the Hustle Insane organization. Uh, formative insane the slash lifetime contract with the Now. <laughs> All right. A lifetime sentence, it sounds like, from your tone and your voice. I'm sorry? It sounds like a lifetime sentence from the way you're saying it. Tonight, I'm going uh, so what happened on that last play? You threw the ball. Do, do you think you should have? Uh, do you think the first um, baseman should have had it? I definitely. Did, well, you have to uh, uh, hear, hear me out. It was a hard comeback to Mavora. There was no matter who the runner is, you definitely had a shot at a double play. Um, then yes, I did throw that ball a little high to first base, which uh, caught some leather on Hoss's glove. Oh, it did. I, I didn't realize that. Could have been caught. It was a little high of a throw, which allowed Eshko to go to second. You think Lambo would have had that throw? Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's very, very possible. Right. So. Uh, it, was a real, it was a one hopper back to the pitcher. It was very right. hard hit. I don't know if Eshko would have been safe or not. I mean, it was oh, extremely it hard hit. One hard, bounce. It was a hard hit. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's why I decided to, to go to first. I think he hesitated. Did you get before. slack from 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 your teammates or coaching staff that you should not have thrown it or no? No. No. Okay. No. So apparently it was a it was a decent throw, not perfect. Then maybe the first baseman should have had it, and you would have been out of that inning. You would have had. Handled. Yeah. You would have had two no, outs and nobody on. I I I take the blame that I should have made a better throw. Right. Right. All right, Avi. Do you like your team's chances this week uh, with three games coming up? I think we have to uh, go back to the drawing board with the uh, league committee and uh, try to do away with these uh, triple headers going forward. Well, you guys had a pitcher that went to Israel. You didn't want to play without him. You could have played a couple of games. You had plenty of opportunities, and you didn't want to play. Well, 
They were giving you AB sack and a fill in for Mavora, yeah. and uh, you didn't want to take it. Well, we do have uh, options to play on Friday, but uh, it's no one's game. And to ask uh, uh, a gamer like Ike Mavora to go out and pitch three games on an 85 degree day is asking a lot. Well, we did it on a 100 degree day. So did all in. And I've seen Moses do it on a 108 degree day at 442 pounds. So well, that's not, not, that, not going to cut it with me. The same goes for Moses in that, that respect. Yeah. That yeah, was a beautiful day, actually. Not the other now, it's three straight games today. No, okay. No, okay. All right. Thank we'll you, Bill. The next board meeting. Thank you, Mr. Salem. All right. Now, all right we can uh, have. We have an in guest, uh, in studio guest, yeah. actually, that's going to break through all the possibilities. Now, what the whole thing is not the 85 degree day. It is hard to play a triple header. Yeah. I'm one and two. Uh, the Bears went one and two. Hustle went one and two. And only Exit 105 went two and one in a triple header. Right. Very hard to win three. But how many times have you seen a playoff team down two games to none and win, win those three? three? A lot of times. A it lot of times. Um, uh, all right. We have, I thought, by, to <laughs> prove his theory, I thought he pitched three great games besides the, the walks. I mean, for considering uh, it was how hot it was. Yeah. Uh, I mean, first of all, I'd like to introduce now. Um, head statistician. Head statistician and uh, playoff scenario guru, uh, Mr. Albert Tal is going to break down uh, scenarios uh, for the playoff uh, teams. Uh, Albert, come in, yeah, studio. Come to the, right. uh, come into the studio. Got his, uh, draft uh, board over here. Is uh, show me the view, yeah. Uh, welcome, Albert. Thank first you, of all, you. and uh, I, need money, you've been a, I need a microphone. I'm you, a you've been a veteran yeah. uh, thank you. in this league for uh, many years, as far yeah, as uh, right. staff. Have you ever seen anything like this uh, this season's? Uh, I've never seen any scenario like this. We have nine teams, and uh, right now there are quite a few teams, maybe three or four teams that can easily get the bye and they can easily miss the playoffs yeah. outright without even a one game playoff. So, very interesting scenarios, and uh, we're in for a good. Uh, Right. So we've, well, established, I, I, sorry, we've established one uh, point we mentioned earlier. Exit 105 is in. Is in. So that we can prove. Exit 105 is in. We cannot prove conclusively that all in has clinched. We have removed the X from the standings. Right. Oh, wow. Um, because although we can prove a lot of scenarios where they can clinch, we haven't proved every scenario when they can clinch. Right. So therefore, we can't prove that they definitely clinched. I'll tell you right now, Expos haven't clinched. Pirates, I can prove to you soon. We'll talk right. about it. Pirates have not clinched, and there's quite a few ways where they can miss the playoffs outright. So we'll talk about and that. And wow. also, you can also prove that every team is mathematically alive. There's no team. Of course, yeah, okay. yeah, including the Braves. Okay. Of course, are still alive. Well, I, I have a few questions. Um, first of all, it's just interesting the standings. The Exit 105, because they never had the buy yet, they were always ahead in wins. They seem like they're so far ahead. Right. They're really not. I know. They're, they're not like uh, 1986 uh, Golden Jets, right. uh, you know, 16 <laughs> and, and, and 2, and yeah. ended up going 21 right. and 2. They're only 10 and 6, right. you know? So it's not exactly like they have this yeah. aura about them. You know what's funny about them? I, I don't think anybody's scared of them. It's like a 10 and 6, but you think they're like right in the I mean, to me, I think the Pirates are like much, you know, at eight the and Pirates six. right now are pretty dangerous. Yeah, so I, think I, I, I don't think anybody fears Exit 105. They look at their lineup. There's no, you know, so. Um, so, so let's see. I, I, I would like to start with the Braves, if you don't well, mind. We should move to the whiteboard. So we let's yeah. go there. Because I want to see. I thought the Braves were eliminated um, at five and nine, but you say that the Braves are still alive. The Braves so are still alive. Show us how the Braves could possibly. Well, Enter the playoffs. Here we are. We have the uh, the playoff scenario whiteboard. Um, we have the standings in here in blue. These are the current standings as of week eight. Um, let's get this camera up a little bit so you can see us. Uh, for, before we do the uh, whiteboard, we should go over the rules. Uh, the rules quickly about the tiebreakers. I think that yeah. everyone should be informed. First of all, uh, six people make the play. Six teams make the playoffs out of nine. Um, so three people eliminated. Six are in. The top two get buys. The way it works is, uh, if you're fighting for a playoff spot, head-to-head -head comes first. Uh, if, if you're fighting for one playoff spot, head-to-head -head comes first. If head-to-head -head is tied, you play a one-game playoff. You cannot be eliminated based on run differential. But there are quite a few scenarios, which we went over, where you have three or four teams fighting for two or three playoff spots. Right. In that case, you would do the head-to-head -head of all those teams against each other. Those three or four teams, they're combined head-to-head. -head. You would pick the team that has the best head-to-head -head and put them in the playoffs and recalculate the head-to-head -head to the remaining teams. And sometimes when you recalculate that, it changes, it changes and, it's, and the head-to-head -head is all tied and you have to resort to putting a team in the playoffs based on run differential, leaving the other two 
playing a one game playoff, playoff or to recap the head to head between those two. So we have quite a few scenarios. It's interesting. Like you could get into the playoffs and run differential, you but you can't, can't be eliminated, eliminated right. because exactly. run differential. It's, it's a big distinction, exactly. Okay. Um, so you, quickly, here's uh, why this week is so much more complicated than usual weeks. Uh, if usual week we have four matchups, right? So we have a matchup one, we have matchup two, three, and four. And we know that each matchup, there's only three possibilities for each matchup. We right. have one team sweeping. We have the other team sweeping, or split. And we have a split. So there's three, 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 and three. This is on a normal week, okay? So you have three times three times three times three equals 81. So on a normal week, there are 81 different combinations of results that can happen. This week, as we know, there are two makeup games, right? So add those two makeup games, there's two results can happen from each, one team winning and the other team winning. Right. So take this 81, multiply it by two, for the one game, mm -hmm. multiply it by two for the other makeup game. One, two, we, have 80, two. we have 324 possibilities that can happen this week wow. just from those two makeup games. So this week is, is quite exciting just because of the math uh, before we look at the tiebreakers. Alone, without even looking at the standings, this week is, uh, is pretty complicated. So where do you want to start? I want to start with the Braves and show me how sure. the fans of Atlanta should <laughs> still be watching and still be coming to Turner Field because... I had them eliminated at five and nine. Right. So the Braves will keep in mind are only are only a half game back from Hustle and the Hurricanes, who are uh, who are both uh, in the playoff hunt. And also keep in mind that Hustle is playing the Hurricanes a doubleheader this week. So one of those teams has to lose at least one game. You know, leaving the Braves in a good position to bump up ahead of not only one of them, maybe both of them. Right. Um, so there's actually uh, quite a few possibilities for a five-way tie this this uh, this uh, this week, making the playoffs or even getting a bye. Uh, one one scenario that I that I uh, that we came up with. There we go. One scenario that we came up with is uh, let's say the Braves sweep the Bears. Okay. okay. So you have the Braves sweeping the Bears. So you have the Braves at seven and nine. Right. And we have the Sox splitting with the Pirates. Right. Okay. We also have the Sox losing to the Canes that one game. That so makes the Sox seven Sox and nine. Sox seven and nine. We also have. Hustle splitting with the Canes. Okay. That'll make the Canes six and nine. Six and nine, and, and uh, no, well, well the Canes well, won that that game. Again, so it's the Canes would be seven and nine. The Sox. The Canes would be seven and nine because they won the make game against okay. the Sox. We have the Hustle beating the Bears one game, Oops. and they would be Hustle. seven and nine seven as well because they split. Right. So I we have to see a little pattern forming here. Yep. And. Um, who else we got at seven and nine here? We have uh, the Bears losing the Bears, three. The Bears are losing three games because they're losing uh, the game, the makeup game against Hustle, and, and they're getting, getting swept by the Braves. So you have the bad news Bears at seven, at seven and nine. nine. In this case, we have a five-way tie for two playoff spots. So only two out of these five teams can make the playoffs. Okay. So if we do the head-to-head, -head, combined of these five teams, who's the number one team in the head-to-head? -head? The Braves, five and three against the other four teams. So the Braves would take the number five seed. So the Braves not only are in, but they're not yeah, in the they last the five seed. seed. Unbelievable. They could be the five seed. And the sixth seed would be the Bears. If you recalculate the head-to-head -head with the remaining four teams, the Bears actually win it, and the Bears would be the sixth seed and get into the playoffs. Out, out, and out. Sox so the Bears have a chance to lose all three in this situation and, and get into and get the in playoffs with, with help. The, with the Braves, exactly. Okay, I'm interested. I mean, I don't think there's anybody worse than the but, Canes. Wait, sorry, but keep in mind, <laughs> this is not the only possibility of the Braves making the playoffs. There are quite, probably, uh, dozens and dozens of ways they can make it. This is one of the more interesting really, ones. Really. Right. Now, the Canes just saying every shot. I mean, this is a team with a laughing stock, one and seven. Right. Who do they get the tiebreakers against? Obviously, it would be um, again the. Uh, we have our matchup sheet here. It lists uh, every single team's relationship with the other team. Um, the Lima Sustep spent countless hours on this, and the uh, the Hurricanes uh, have a very uh, a very particular head-to-head -head scenario, very similar to the Pirates, where they either got swept or they were swept. So based on who the based on who their tiebreaker is with, they're either horrible against the teams that they're tiebreaking with or they're mm -hmm. amazing because there's so much of variation 2-0 right. and 0-2. Yeah. Right. They swept oddly enough all in. They that swept all in but then they also got swept by the exit they got swept by Pirates, they got swept by Bad News Bears and Pirates and Bad News Bears are teams that will probably be tied with them or close to them. Yeah, so but it's good for them that they got, if they had to pick who to get swept by they got swept by Exit 105 exit one not nowhere the near them. them. Right, right. Exactly. Or all, exactly. uh, all in, oh they swept all in so yeah. Right. So, so let's show, we should show how Exit 105 could easily miss the bye yeah, uh, even see. though 
We'll look at that. Even though before we get to the Pirates, right. let's see how Exit 105 could not have the buy when right. they've been number one in the standings all season. Right. right. So Exit 105, yeah, we look at them. I, I particularly think they're one of the weaker first place teams we've seen in recent history, but they've been 10 and 6 the entire year, and uh, they can actually not only miss the buy, but be the four seed, and uh, not even barely have not even have a choice of who their opponent is. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. So let's say um, Exit 105 is 10 and 6. We know that their season is over. I don't want to put the 105, it makes it look like I know. Okay. It makes them look at the um, 10 and 5. Right. Um, and let's say all in. Sweeps. Sweeps, which I. Uh, Please, no. <laughs> which is a very favorable outcome, right? Right. Uh, the, let's say the Pirates also sweeps, so the Pirates would be 10 and 6 as well. And let's say the Bears uh, win all three games. They, 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 and they would be 10 and 6 as well. In this case, we have a four way tie uh, for two buys. Right. Now, you cannot eliminate a team on run differential when you're deciding between a, making the playoffs and not making the playoffs. But deciding a buy and not a buy, you never resort to a one-game playoff for a run buy. You just go of keep course. going down the tiebreakers. Yeah. Anyway, we don't even need to go down that far because um, if you do the head-to-head -head amongst these teams, All-In actually is first place 5-1 and one against the other teams. Wow. So All-In would be number one. Uh, the Bears, if you recalculate it, the Bears are actually number two, get the buy. And Pirates have the tiebreaker over for the, well, five, exit 105 sweeping, sweeping them. Swept them. So That's Pirates right. would have the sweep. three, exit would have the four, one, two, three, four. So the Bears could actually get a bye, but in the other scenario, they would actually, you know, stuck in a five way tie to miss the playoffs. So. But I think also, I believe if there was a three way tie, they'd be, uh, they wouldn't get the bye either between the Pirates, all in and exit, right? Well, let's see. Well, uh, exit 105 against the Pirates is 0 and 2. 0 and 2, and all, all in, in and 1. And 1 and 1, so they're 1 and 3. And then, uh, uh, and and then, then the Pirates would right. be three and one. So, and then, and right. Well, the Pirates are zero and two against all, and yeah. So, exit one hundred and five would have a, uh, yeah. Let yeah, me ask you a question. In a three-way tie, yeah. right? Yeah. We got a lot of Expo fans out there. Right. We have a lot of Pirate fans out there. Right. Pick which one you want to go with first, and show us how either of these teams could be eliminated. Pirate, right. Let's start with the Pirates, um, for no reason. You know, <laughs> no obvious reason. Um, Fans uh, in Pittsburgh have been. Right. By the way, they are right. America's team in the uh, YMSL this yes. year. Yes. Very popular organization. They're, uh, they're actually having a viewing party in PNC Park. Is that right? P three, it's not Three Rivers anymore. It's it PNC, PNC Park. PNC, PNC yeah. Park are having a, a party there. So um, there's actually uh, 11 different combinations of, uh, of four way four way ties at eight and eight for three spots. I think it's a it's a rare thing that can happen. There's actually 11 different ways. Uh, that there could be a four, very particular four-way tie, eight and eight for three playoff spots, not including three-way ties, five-way ties. So you're saying like that. there's 11 different ways, four teams could be tied for three spots. Exactly, right. okay. 11 different ways. And quite a few of those ways, the Pirates would be out without even a one-game playoff. Let's sh I'll show you one of them. Uh, so let's say, let's go scenario 5A in our, uh, in our diagram here. Let's look. If you look at scenario 5A, oh, on the microphone, right? I'm just yeah. testing and making uh, sure. Yeah, the phone microphone. Yeah. Uh, in scenario 5A, the Bears win exactly one out of three against uh, against the Braves and Hustle, and the Bears would be eight and eight because they won exactly one game. Right. So Bears would be eight and eight in this scenario. Okay. So what and are we trying to figure out here? Who has, how the Pirates, the Pirates can, can miss can the playoffs? Right. Okay. Because we had them as clinched. Yeah. Right. And now he's showing us why they're not. Why they didn't clinch? Uh, White Sox. Let's say the White Sox sweep the Pirates. Right. So the Pirates would be eight and eight. Eight and eight. eight, and eight. Okay, and let's say the White Sox lose that makeup game to the Canes. Eight eight and eight. The Sox are eight and eight. All right, and then Expo sweep all in, right? Yeah. Which, you, know, you know, very uh, very probable. Probable. <laughs> so we got all in, eight, eight and eight, eight, right? Four way tie. Three of these teams will get in. Okay, three of these teams will get in. Um, and let's see, the head to head between the head to head between these. Um, actually, the number one team, All In, is actually five and one against the other team. So All In would get the four seed in this case. Right. Um, the Bears would get the five seed if you recalculate the head-to-head. -head. And the White Sox, what did they do against the Pirates this year? They split, I believe. Huh? The White Sox. No, they played this week. Oh, they're they playing play this week. week. And in this scenario, oh, in this scenario, the White Sox sweep the Pirates. Yeah, yeah. So White oh Sox my God. The thing, and the Pirates are out according to the scenario. <laughs> So there you go. Did you get that? Chochira. Pirates are out. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Fire. Pirates are out. If Joe Chira can't get the sliding. I don't know if he can get it. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, you know, we'll figure that out. No, but it's 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 
hard to think that the Pirates are going to lose two when they haven't lost two in around three months. Oh, but they did lose right. five out of six, so that means possible. That's true, too. Right. Now show the Expo Nation how show, Expos could be eliminated. Show Expos being eliminated. Right now, we don't have any scenarios that we've come up with where the Expos could be eliminated outright just yet. I'm, I think there might be a couple. But wait, in that situation, right. you crossed out the Pirates, right. but they both ate and ate. Oh, but it was it would be a sweep, so therefore right. they could be eliminated. Right, because okay. in, in this hypothetical, the Pirates would be swept by the White Gotcha, Sox. gotcha. Okay. okay, so let's show how the Expos won't make it. Right now, this scenario shows how the Expos would be stuck in a head-to-head um, -head run differential garbage and uh, and also show a one-game playoff. I'll show the one-game playoff. So we have, uh, let's say, do this quickly. Um, Obviously, you know, the, the Expos get swept this week would make right. us 8-8. Eight and eight. Right, so let's say the... Uh, all in sweeps the Expos, right? Yeah. You're eight and eight. Okay. And then Hustle sweeps the Canes and wins one versus the Bears. So that would make it eight uh, and eight. Hustle eight and eight. So that's Hustle winning all three. Right. And then we have the White Sox sweeping the Pirates. Pirates, eight and eight. And then we have um, Hustle, White Sox, Pirate, and then the White Sox would sweep the Pirates, but they lose one against the Canes, that would make them 8-8 eight eight as well. Gotcha. So this is a four-way tie, 8-8. Eight eight. Okay, if you calculate the head-to-head, -head, uh, the four seed would actually go to the Sox. Uh, if you, once you eliminate the Sox and you recalculate the head-to-head, -head, the Pirates actually have the five seed. Which is funny because in our previous example, the Pirates were eliminated. Like I said before, the Pirates have so many 2-0, 0-2s, oh, oh right, yeah. that depending on who they're in the tiebreak with, they're either the first place or the last place. Yeah. There's a lot of variation. And then the last two teams left for the playoff spot are Expos and Hustle. What did they do this year? We split. They split. This would be a one-game one playoff. Wow. So that's where the Expos can miss the playoffs if they lose Hustle to Hustle in the one-game playoff. And that one-game playoff would be on a Friday, I believe, uh, yeah. probably. Right. Yeah. Hopefully, right. uh, if we could get the schedule. Wow. Uh, normally, so, we do it on a Sunday, but, you know, the, the Hustle's already played three games that day, so... Right. Make them play four, who cares? <laughs> A.B. Salem would be thrilled. Uh, Albert, this is unbelievable work that you've done here. Um, and uh, wait, that wait, answers wait, the uh, question. Yes? Uh, Captain Haber just called in. Mm -hmm. He wants you to prove if, is there any way All In can't make the playoffs. I, like we said before, we cannot prove conclusively that they can't make it. Uh, but we, we have quite a few examples how they can make it. So until we disprove it, we can't say that yeah. they're out of the playoffs yet. Uh -oh. Well, Mr. Haver claims he calculated it and says that they clinched. Is this the same uh, Mr. Haver that was x-raying bats last week? or? Yeah, this is the same one that dropped out of Sephardic High School, so we don't need to get his uh, opinion. No, they, maybe, maybe, they, they, maybe they clinched, but we don't know. It's most sure likely yet. they did. Right. You, most likely, but you know we can't officially right. say. Without. We can't officially say. Pirates and Expos, we can officially say. Um, all in, we cannot yet. So. Right. So how, uh, let's right. just do the Canes, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still amazed that they okay. haven't have a shot. Right. Uh, they're so five and eight. Getting in. They're obviously in a seven and nine situation. Oh, actually, I'll show you a situation where the Canes can get in. I don't have to force you. So we'll, we'll talk, about that. We'll talk about that. Yeah, right. it'd be crazy. We'll talk about if, that. If the Hurricanes are the four seed, it's crazy. <laughs> we'll talk about that, and, it, and it's very possible. All right. So we'll do that quickly, and then we'll. Uh, so obviously, they win all three. Hustle goes to eight and eight. Okay, so Canes uh, sweep Hustle, win one against the White Sox. So eight, obviously, Canes would be eight and eight. Right. Um, White Sox sweep the Pirates. That but means that they play in, they lose the play in against the Canes. So the Sox would be. I mean, this is the one in seven eight Canes eight. we're talking about here. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, Bears win exactly one out of three. Okay, it doesn't matter. The doesn't variation matter doesn't actually matter. The Bears uh, it doesn't matter mathematically, so the Bears would be eight and eight. And uh, if Expos sweep all in, then they would be eight and eight as well. Okay, okay, so, so four out of these four, eight, we're trying to get how many teams make it? Three teams make it out of these four. Oh, three because out of Because Hustle four. would be eliminated based on the Canes sweeping them. And, and the, the Braves, Braves would be eliminated, eliminated based on the Bears winning a one okay. game against them as well. Okay. So, um, if we look at that scenario. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Canes against the other three teams are actually four and two and would take the four seed. And if you recalculate the head-to-head uh, -head again with the remaining teams, you actually get Sox and All-In tied for fifth. And the Bears um, out. Wow. wow! So the Canes can actually be the four seed, and, and have home field advantage. And all in would be the sixth. No. Would be tied for fifth with the Sox. You'd have to look at the runs run and run the teams, teams and whatever. Right. Wow! So wow. the Canes can actually make it as a four seed. Great job! Um, Unbelievable. 
So there are, you know, there's a million different scenarios, and I think it's time for the uh, for the prediction segment. Of yeah. the show. Here's, here's one one last point I want to make yeah. is it looks very rare that any of these things can happen. You say, oh, what's the odds of a, right. a four-way tie happening? Although it's it's rare that any one of these things happen, it's actually very common, it's very probable that one of these things will happen. Right. So out of all the five-way tie scenarios, the four-way tie scenarios, and the three-way tie scenarios, out of all those possibilities, the odds of at least one of them happening very are very, very high. So we're, we're probably in for one of these tie-break situations coming oh, wow. up this week. So well, we got them all covered or uncovered, I should say. Right. Let's do so. predictions. <laughs> Albert, thank you for joining us in studio. That was uh, tremendous. I know every team uh, has been working out their own scenarios, yeah. but he has the task of working out everyone's scenarios. Unbelievable when you think about it, really, where some of these teams came from early in the year, and actually, and honestly, the Canes one is not even far fetched. It's, it's you know, it's no. I mean, the Expos do their job and sweep. They'll. Uh, the question is, close. will Hustle win all three in one game? Will the Braves even win two in one day? Will the Canes sweep all three? Right, right. They, if they do their job, maybe something else could fall in place and it could work out. A lot of what-ifs, but we saw the combinations and they certainly not yeah. uh, not far-fetched. I'm this way. Um, so let's see now. Um, all right. So now, uh, as far as uh, we should mention, uh, there's a huge tournament in Eatontown this week. So... Uh, girls tournament annual so we're uh, sort of uh, relocating we're gonna have further information on the fields uh, in a couple of days uh, so the first matchup is going to be uh, the Pirates versus the White Sox um, and um, I don't know this is uh, this is a tough one uh, Ralph Hannon against the Red Hot uh, Pirates Pirates playing for a bye right now, not even the playoffs. One win obviously gets them in. A um, lot at stake, and the White Sox have three games, uh, you know, uh, to go today. So I, I, I see a uh, split in this, uh, in this game. I also see a split. Um, no disrespect to the Pirates. They're hotter than any team. Yeah. Um, they're, they're really on fire right now, but I think the White Sox will be able to tame their bats a little bit and eke out a low-scoring game. Um, so I also see a split. Yeah, so, um, and that would essentially... Uh, the Pirates would get in, the White yeah. Sox would stay help, alive. Stay right. alive with a pulse. And ha right. All right, now the Hurricanes uh, versus uh, versus Hustle. Um, Hurricanes versus Hustle. Uh, I see Mavora rebounding uh, in this game, uh, in the first game. Uh, but I, I, the team has just been so inconsistent. I see another split here. Uh, but again, we should say I, is um, no, they're not. Are they what? No, they're not even eliminated if they lose the first game, the Hurricanes, because they could. By the way, if, get if these two nine, teams they split, get seven and nine, or they only come to eight and eight. So in other words, a lot depends on. Uh, if yeah. these two teams split, the Pirates clinch and the Expos yeah. clinch, because then there'll be three nine right, lost right, teams. Right, right. Um, so you're saying the split? I um, see a split also. I sort of think the. Uh, I'm leaning towards the Hurricanes, by the way. I was really? really, really impressed by them when I played them. I didn't play Hustle in a very, very long time, um, but I see Hustle losing uh, those two games. I think the Hurricanes are going to sweep and stay alive and improve to 7-8, and eight, entering a huge makeup game for Game 3. Yeah, now Hustle would be eliminated if it got swept. Oh, for sure. Yeah, neither matter. of these teams could be... Could so they're going to be playing basically a third game, uh, a meaningless third game. Yeah. Played. So um, I see a split. But um, now the next one is the Expos uh, versus All In. Uh, Red Hot All In. Just talked about them. And uh, the Expos has been pretty steady the whole year. Um, again, we mentioned uh, one win, you clinch. And... Uh, all in thinks they're in, so uh, we'll, we'll see that. But um, oh, this is a, this is going to be a very very tough matchup. Uh, even though Mikey's pitching good, um, I see another split here. Uh, but if I had to pick a sweep, I'd say All in is going to sweep this, uh, this this game. But I can see a split. I'm going to go with the uh, <laughs> Canadian sweeping the Americans. Um, I think the Expos. We've been saying it all year. We're waiting to click, and I think. Now's the right time to get hot, so why not? By the way, I should mention, uh, you know, we did have a, a major uh, scare uh, over at Memorial <laughs> One. Uh, somebody, uh, I believe, maybe the same thief that was breaking into Mercedes and uh, and Porsches was almost took the Canadian flag. 
Bobby, I was in my kitchen at around 8 p.m. on Sunday night. I was drinking a glass of water, and suddenly life stopped for a moment. The glass, in slow motion, slid out of my hand and shattered into a million pieces. My mind raced back, where is the Canadian flag? I ran down to where I keep my uh, softball bag. It wasn't there. Ran into the car without saying a word to anybody. 200 miles an hour on Route 36. And the flag was not there. Thank you, Moni Abadi, for salvaging the flag and saving it and, and bringing it, uh, keeping it in Expo hands over this yeah. week. Well, it was ironic, it seemed to me, that you hung it up on the first base uh, dugout and your whole team was sitting on the third base dugout. I know, that was another mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I hung it up early. I get there early, I hung it up, and then we realized it's so sunny over there. Yeah, uh, Let's go sit in the shade. <laughs> so you forgot it. But uh, thank God it's, it's back. Oh, it's in good hands. So, um... Now, the next game is going to be a big matchup, the Bra Braves versus the Bandage Bears. Bears. Um, I, I honestly, this Braves, uh, this Bad News Bears team, I'll tell you, I don't know what to make of them. Uh, but I think Sack is going to take the first game. Um, they're going to, you know, muster up enough offense to, to get the first game. Um, I'll tell you, oh, love to, I'd like to see the Braves get in. I think they're going to sweep, maybe. Do you really? Yeah, I, I, I see it. I don't think the Braves swept all year. I could be wrong, but I'm going to go I out on a limb. I get, I'm assuming Moses is getting the nod. I don't know. but uh, I think Eddie Michon's getting the nod. Oh, you think? I think so. I don't know I mean, why they didn't go with Michon in Game 3 the other day, because uh, they went with Moses again after he... I'm not. You know what? Moses pitched well in that game. He did, actually. And he almost pitched... He only, Michon only pitched three innings, so basically... Uh, Moses pitched three games that day. I'm going to go with what you were leaning towards in the beginning. I'm going to say the Braves are going to win game one, eke it out, and then I think, uh, you know, right when they get all excited, Jacob will make some uh, comments and prediction, and then uh, the Bad News Bears will win that game too. I, I see a split over there. Yeah, so another split. So uh, so now we got the makeup games. Now, now if Hustle, as we picked, I picked Hustle to get swept, though. So you picked you're picking them to split. So in, in scenario, if Hustle gets swept, I'm picking Bad News Bears to kill them in that game. <laughs> I mean, basically. The, uh, but if it's a split, um, I'm also picking uh, the Bears. Huh? Okay, well, oh, we have a call coming yeah, in before the triple header game. Okay, hold on. Caller, you're on the air. Louie from uh, Louisiana. <laughs> How you guys doing? Oh, good. Oh, this must be Louie the Lip. Is this Louis Mastery of the yeah, Bears? Yeah, this is a uh, short center extraordinaire. Right. Your, your grandfather is the most famous Louis the Lip. <laughs> Louis, you got to be very happy with your defense uh, this year. You've been, uh, you found your niche at short center. Yeah, I feel very comfortable over there. Um, Eddie Richie is showing me a little bit of the rules, telling me where to play, and, you know, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, react and try to. Uh, Funny, he plays between Eddie Richley and Eddie Misha. Yeah. That's a lot of experience on the infield right there. Yes. Um, Louis, what's your prediction for your three games this upcoming week? I actually think, uh, you know, we have a very good shot at actually winning all three. With which pitcher? Who's going to be your starting pitcher? You know, I can't even predict that now. <laughs> That's something that, uh, you know, we just have to wait and see uh, how everyone feels on Sunday morning. You know, that first game... Me and Victor had a bar mitzvah this week, and, you know, when, when I got there, I saw Eddie Mishaw pitching, and I didn't even know he knew how to pitch. So, you know, that was, that was a big surprise to me. Before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think our catcher was playing right field. Um, Nemi was oh playing God. first base or something. You know, and Jake was actually hurt, so Charles Sacker was playing left field. By the way, I heard Jake hurt his ankle, and it, what's his status yeah, for this it upcoming game? Was it ankle or was, uh, it was a knee, hyperextended knee? Oh, so is, is he out? Is he done he's, for the year? He's getting an oh, MRI so today. I actually heard about Jake. Victor was actually telling me today that Jake seems to be fine and he should be ready to go on Sunday. Okay. Yeah. I hope so. You don't want a season to, to end yeah. on injury. Um, all right, caller. We got to finish up our predictions. Uh, you know, we got the good luck the rest of the way, and hopefully, uh, you guys find a way to sneak into the playoffs. 
All right. A giggling Louis the Lip yeah, over there. Yeah, well, you know, he's nervous. First time call a rookie. You know, Long time uh, listener, though. The uh, high rated uh, Doug Less report. So, Hustle versus Bad News Bears in a makeup game. It might be a joke because uh, yeah, Hustle, Hustle might be eliminated. I just hope the teams that are eliminated, like, say the, say the Braves lose game one and they're eliminated. I hope they play and respect the integrity of the no, league. No, they definitely do. Yeah, I hope so because there's huge ramifications. We just did the whiteboard. There's huge, huge playoff implications for every single yeah, team well, in the league. Well, listen, they also have pride. To knock off a team is also uh, means something. I hope so. Let the team walk into the playoff spot. Uh, now so, the final one. Wait, who are you picking? Hustle oh. or Bad News Bears? Oh, I said if uh, I'm picking Bad News Bears, if Hustle has nothing to play for, and uh, I'm uh, ooh, that's a tough one. If it's very, it's both uh, if they have something to play for, but I think the Bears uh, Bears are going to win either way. So I'm picking uh, Bears. Now. I'm going to go with Hustle in that game because I have Hustle getting swept. So I figure they're going to win. They're not going to lose all three. Oh, even if they lose two and they have nothing. Yeah, to play I for, think they'll, they'll figure out something. Maybe they'll play loose who that. Yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, maybe the Bears. Bad News Bears, Bears I have splitting the first two games. So I have them lose that. They'll end the season eight and eight. That, yeah, that's uh, what my prediction. Whether it or not. Right. All right. And then the final makeup game is uh, the Canes uh, versus the White Sox. And um, uh, again, this also depends. What do we have? Uh, hustle? We had them well, splitting. I had the. You had the Hurricanes winning. So. I have the Canes winning both and then being alive for, with it, for this yeah. game. They'll enter this game, according to me, at 7 and 8. Yeah. And uh, what do you think? Uh, Exactly. Then I think they're going to feel it and then be let down because David Gindy in a third game is tough. He's been pitching phenomenal, but three games uh, in, in one day to win all three, I don't, I don't think any team is good enough to win three games right. in one day this year. Right. Not it's because true. of weather, not because it's right. unfair, it's just hard. because very hard. every team is the same this year. Right. And why should one team win all three? I don't see it happening. So you pick the Sox. So I'll pick the Sox in that game. I'm going with the Sox also, so uh, that means for the Sox, I picked up the split. So they'll finish at 8-8 eight and eight if we have it. And uh, again, who knows what's going to happen after that. I also picked the Sox to split, and then I have them winning that game. So you're right, yeah. I have everyone finishing at 8-8 eight and eight in case you want to. Now, what are the chances we could have nine teams at 8-8? Eight eight what are you going to do one year when that happens? Next year, you're just going to have to flip a coin and figure out who wins. He's already working on the scenarios there. It's crazy. Could that be the first tiebreaker could be even? I guess it could be, right? Everyone splits every week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody splits every week. And then everyone has the same head to head yeah. against everybody yeah. also. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to start the season again. No, but everyone has to have the same head to head as everybody because everyone's splitting every week. Right. Right, right. So but some do, teams sweep and some teams have to do like, you have to do like four one game playoffs. It's crazy. Run differential and stuff. Yeah. No, I think we just start the season over and collect dues once again. Exactly. Five, <laughs> collect the dues again. <laughs> Can't leave that part out, you know. But uh, I had a crazy I can tell you this. Year. Next week, we've been promising this each week, but next week we're going to know who's in the playoffs for sure. No, we might not know because if there's a one-game playoff, That's we'll, know, we'll, know, we'll know five out of six. Now, here's an interesting scenario. We, we might know the teams that have a bye. And let's say a team that ha uh, or the third-place team wants to pick another team that already is in the playoffs. That series could technically start... While the other two teams are uh, haven't played yet, you know the the last playoff spot. Explain again. Well, well, let's say the third place team. Let's just say all in. Okay. Which is third. Now you there's two teams. Let's say you're fighting for another team for the final playoff spot. But let's say they don't care who the winner that they weren't picking them anyway. They might pick uh, the team that's already right. So they now, could start that series and they could. The team. But the question is, is that makeup? Get, is that one game playoff going to be on the Friday? Yeah. Well, and then you make them play again on the Sunday. But then we usually pick who they're going to play on Tuesday. Well, saying, yeah. And they don't even know who's in yet. You're right. Right, right. But I'm saying they might say, oh, I already know I, I want to go up against the Bears. They have no picture and the, the Bears are fourth and, I, you know, whatever. But they shouldn't do that because then if you have the one game playoff, what if there's an injury in that yeah. game? Yeah. And then that, you know, like. You, you... Well, now, you know, the Mo Shammer situation of Exit 105 doesn't have a buy. People are probably going to think, oh, let me jump and uh, take them. It's true. You the know. one thing I know is if the Expos make the playoffs and Exit 105 has the choice of who they play at whatever point, they're going to pick the Expos. They've made that crystal oh, really? clear to us. Yeah. So we're, got, we're, we're waiting for them to pick us. Well, the first, you know, the first game of that miserable day uh, was 18-4. to four. Right. And what was the score of the second game? It was, it was 6-5. We were down 6-0. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But we gave up runs on nonsense that yeah. game. A lot of, Moshe Amma scored from first on a grounder to the pitcher. Right. That was an error. Uh, there was a 
bloop into no man's land that three runs scored on. Beavis, uh, Beavis yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's it's uh, that's how we feel. They feel right. like we beat the crap out of you twice. Yeah. So yeah, Ali's not impressed with the uh, Exo 105. He's made that known. Does not like. Who's impressed with anybody? I think people <laughs> are giving the Pirates a lot of respect and maybe all in. No other team is really getting that much respect. No, no. Every well, you know, every team has a, a huge uh, drawback. You know, the Bears with the pitching situation. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Canes with the outfield situation. Um, I mean, nobody's really been able to put it all together the whole year. So. It's all about who does it now. Right. This is when the season starts. Everyone is alive. Who's going to get hot now for the next right. month? It's ironic. Joe Chira last year was the complete opposite. He started off 8-0 and, and struggled to get in. Uh, the last, he was the last right. seed to get in the last day of the year. And then... Um, this year is the complete opposite. He's That's red right. hot going to the playoffs. Right. It's all so timing. Be a very, very dangerous team. Very dangerous offense. Uh, but again, we've seen in the past in the playoffs there are no 12-10 games. There's no 14-8. It's all 4-2, 3-1. So th that's going to be a, a thing also to watch. Uh, we do know this Father's Day there's going to be three uh, three teams that are going to be uh, going home disappointed. So right. uh, won't be a happy Father's Day for three captains. And um, and we'll see. Uh, you know, the uh, scenarios were pointed out, so we'll... Uh, but he had scenarios this thick, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy what yeah, happened. Yeah, he just did four out of... Uh, I can't yeah. wait for Sunday, tell you the truth. Hopefully the weather cooperates and everything is okay, and, and we get the games in. Hopefully there's no nonsense with umpires and things <laughs> like that, and we just play a couple of good, clean yeah. games to determine who moves on. Who gets the bye and who goes home? Yeah, it's hard to believe that the regular season is actually coming to a close. I mean, Every year we have a team we're making fun of that's eliminated, yeah. that's gone. You know, we had the Bachelors, we had the Cheeseheads. Right, right. You know, there's always a team. No, actually, that, the Cheeseheads didn't lose till the final game of the year. The Cheeseheads. Yeah, but we made fun of them anyway. Yeah, we made fun Jared of Jared Shulman. They held him at first. They held him at third. Yeah. Who scored the time? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the next guy flew out. That's right. Missed the playoffs. That's home. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They held the Jared Shulman at third base. It's a historic so, play. And, and if the hustle doesn't get in, it's another year where Vore doesn't make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he made it in Triple A last year. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah. So uh, Ike Davis also. Over right. There, so uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, we look forward to seeing everybody uh, there on uh, come out and support us. When I, and we'll await the email from the league on field. Hopefully, be local. And hopefully, get Dow and Firemans, and uh, that'll we'll, be great. Uh, we'll get a big turnout, and uh, it should right. be good. And uh, Norman, good luck uh, with your team. Hopefully I hope you'll, so. Uh, Next week we'll be talking to you about first place matchups. And I uh, hope so, man. I, I really hope so. But anything can happen. Yeah, it's the YMSL, and uh, this year has been uh, really one for the ages uh, so far. We'll Thanks see you next week. Uh, we'll see you next week. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there.